with the war leaning in their favor, a British expeditionary force will set its sights in the city of New Orleans in the summer of 1814. The city's capture will give the British access to the American interior via the Mississippi River and be a vital bargaining chip during peace talks. The commander of this British force is Sir Edward Michael Pakenham, the brother-in-law to the Duke of Wellington. Responsibility for defending New Orleans fell to Major General Andrew Jackson. Known to his men as Old Hickory, Jackson arrived in early December and began planning for the city's defense. In the coming weeks, Jackson would assemble a hodgepodge army that was a cross-section of American society. It consisted of Tennessee and Kentucky militia, New Orleans businessmen, privateers, Choctaw Indians, free men of color, United States regulars, and United States Marines. The British landed below New Orleans on December 23rd. When apprised of their landing, Jackson exclaimed, By the eternal, they shall not sleep on our soil. Ever the aggressor, Jackson marched out of the city that night and engaged the British in a rare nighttime battle. After trading several blows, he pulled back to the Rodriguez Canal, and there in the coming days his men would build a rampart forever after known as Lion Jackson. One of the great myths about the Battle of New Orleans is that Lion Jackson was constructed mainly out of cotton bales. While some cotton was used in its construction, the Americans quickly found that it caught fire rather easily. Still, the 7th United States Infantry, which fought with Jackson at New Orleans, is known today as the Cotton Balers. On Christmas Day, Edward Packenham arrived, and on December 28th, he launched a reconnaissance in force against Lion Jackson. This reconnaissance convinced Packenham that he could reduce Lion Jackson by an artillery barrage. And on New Year's Day, 1815, the Americans and the British engaged in a massive artillery duel. The Americans eventually gained the upper hand, leaving Packenham with little choice but to launch an all-out attack. On the morning of the 8th of January, Packenham's assault got underway. His left column under General John Keane was to advance along the river and capture an American redoubt before penetrating the main American line. His right column under General Robert Gibbs was to pierce the left center of the American line and capture the position. Keane managed to capture a redoubt on the American right but failed to penetrate the main American position. Meanwhile, Gibbs came under heavy musketry and cannon fire from Lion Jackson. One American officer said the fire was so great it sounded like the pealing of thunder. Within 30 minutes, the British had suffered 2,000 casualties, including Packenham, Gibbs, and Keene. During the attack, Jackson remained mounted behind the lines, riding up and down to encourage his men. Whenever we see Andrew Jackson today, he is typically depicted on horseback. The British would ultimately abandon the expedition and withdraw from the United States. Jackson's victory brought him national fame. For the remainder of his life, he would be known simply as the hero, or the hero of New Orleans. The 8th of January became a national holiday. Along with Washington's birthday and the 4th of July, it will be celebrated across the nation in the decades to come. National recognition of the 8th of January ended with the Civil War and Reconstruction. The battle has been relegated to obscurity. However, its great legacy is that of Andrew Jackson, who would become president in 1828 and give rise to the age of the common man in the age of Jackson.